Hello grade 7 students, in this lecture we're going to talk about the uh, chapter 2 about nutrition in plants. So in this uh, lecture we're going to talk about the nutrients needed by the green plants and here we we'll start. So if a horse gets hungry, what does it do? Sure, it's going to nibble grass, so it's going to find food. Next, if a tiger gets hungry, what does it do? Sure, it's going to hunt a prey, so search for food. So human, if you get hungry, what do you do? Sure, you're going to cook food or you're going to order food. So what about the green plants? What do they eat and how do they get their food? Here we have four main components for the needs of the green plant. They need light, they need water, they need carbon dioxide, CO2, and they need mineral salts. Green plants, they are the plants that contain a green pigment, which is called chlorophyll. The pigment, chlorophyll is a pigment in green plants that absorbs sunlight. So here you have to know that green plants, they are plants that contain the green chlorophyll, which is the pigment in a green plant that absorbs sunlight. Experiment on page 30 talks about the green plants and water. The objective of the experiment is to study the importance of water for the growth of plants. These two documents, two figures, they show that they contain all the convenient conditions unless plant 1 has water, while plant 2 it doesn't, it lacks water. So the variable factor is water. So table of condition, you have to fill the table of condition. All of them, they are identical except for water and minerals where they are present and plant one and they are absent in plant two so what is the variable factor is the water comparison between these two plants compare the aspects plants one that are watered we are going to talk about the variable factor they are tall and green while plants two that are not watered they are shorter and yellow analyze the obtained results after watering plants one the plants they will grow tall and green yet without water green plants they become yellow and die. Draw out a conclusion. Green plants they need water to grow tall and green. Green plants and CO2. Documenting on page 31. Objective of this experiment is to identify the importance of CO2 for the growth of green plants. Here we have two plants A and B. Plant A contains all the suitable conditions while plant B contains potassium hydroxide. The role of it is to absorb carbon dioxide so here there is no co2 while in this plant we have co2 table of conditions all of them are the same except for co2 why in the presence it grows normally why in its absence the weather and die variable factor carbon dioxide aspect plant one that's grow in the presence of co2 it grows tall and green while plant B that's grown in the absence of carbon dioxide, it withers and becomes yellowish. Analyze, in presence of carbon dioxide, plant A becomes tall and green. Yes, in the absence of carbon dioxide, plant B withers and becomes yellowish. Deduction here, plants, they need carbon dioxide in order to grow well. So as a conclusion here, we conclude that plants, they need water minerals and they need sunlight and carbon dioxide in order to grow. Chapter 2 talking about the nutrition in plants, activity 2, plants absorb water and minerals. So in this you have to know that leaves, you have to know the stem, the buds, roots and root herds. How do green plants get their food? How do they get their needs? Here we have an experiment about green plants and water. First experiment is a control one where we have tube A. Tube A contains clay and water, the level of water remains the same. Plan B where we have a plant. So, tube B contains a plant, the level of water it was here, and it decreases in tube B after two days. Tube C, it decreases a little bit, or there is no root hairs. So, what we can deduce here? Compare the two tubes, A and B, at the beginning of the experiment. What is the role of tube A? So, both tubes contain water and the cover by gray. Tube A doesn't contain a plant, while tube B contains a plant. Tube A role, it's a control tube. Control tube used to compare and explain the experimental results.
Compare the level of water at the beginning and the end of the experiment in tubes A and B. Level of water in tube A without a plant remains at the same, while in tube B containing the plant, the level of water drops to lower level. What can you conclude from this experiment? We can conclude that green plants they absorb water. What is the variable factor between tubes B and C? B and C, the presence of the roots. So compare the level of water in tube B to that in tube C at the end of the experiment. So level of water in tube C, where the plant doesn't have roots, remains the same. While in tube B, where the plant has root dipped in water, the level of water drops to a lower level. We can deduce that the structure responsible for the absorption of the green plants is roots, and especially the root hairs. We're going to identify this later. Observing a root, you have a root cap, root tip, and we have the root hairs. Be careful for the root hairs. Which part of the root absorbs the water? Root cap or root hairs or both? So we have an experiment of document A. We have two plants, one where the root hairs are dipped in water, and second where the root hairs are dipped in oil. This plant it died. Why? This one survives and grow normally. So the key the variable factor, the part of the root, root hair or root cap, which is dipped in the water. So distinguish the condition to which both plants are exposed. In plant one, the root hairs and the root cap, they are in water. While in plant two, the root cap in water, while the root tip is dipped, uh, in, the root hairs are dipped in oil. So analyze, after dipping the root hairs and the root cap in water, the green plants grows, while after dipping the root hairs in oil and the root cap in water, the green plant withers and dies. Conclusion here that the root hairs in the root, root hairs, they are responsible for absorption of water in green plants. What is transpiration? Transpiration is the loss of water vapor through some plant organs. Which organs? They are the leaves. Since water droplets are formed on the inner wall of plastic bag covering plant A, why no water droplets are in plant B? Indicate the major difference. So plant A has leaves while plant B is leafless, doesn't have leaves. Which plastic bag is formed the water vapor in the plant having leaves, which is plant A? Use the plant part responsible for the uh, respiration, transpiration, sorry, as the leaves. So through transpiration, green plants release water vapor from their leaves. Pay attention and study well for your exam. Good luck.